coming in as the first band champion from Maus will be uh, the first thing aimed at Take Fun. Um, Take Fun has played a lot of Jace actually. Uh, he's actually looked at other picks like TF. Um, Rek'Sai comes out as the next band towards Dan. Yes, he had a good game on it yesterday, but interesting, uh, interesting band. Rise as well on the blue side actually comes away from Maus aimed at Kuban, and then Sivir as the next band from uh, Overclockers. We saw a lot of Rise bands yesterday. We're actually expecting Rise potentially to be maybe a touch stronger when it comes to the Rod of Ages, Rod of Ages changes when it, rega when it comes to his uh, some of his damage output. A little bit less tanky though, perhaps. I uh, haven't really seen all that much rise on the new patch, so yep. there, are, there are a couple of top lane changes that we're keeping an eye on. Real uh, interesting picks and bands. Twisted Fate now not available for take fun. Uh, Rek'Sai not available for Dan. Those were champions played in yesterday's games. And honestly, ooh, with this Callista ban, they're actually sitting... Overclock is now daring Maus to take Corky fairly early on, or they get it from themselves, and we end up in this weird situation where you have to now go uh, try and put something against the Corky. Mm. And we haven't yet found out what AD carries are on that next tier when it comes to it. Yeah, uh, we've seen Warlight just deciding uh, I'm going to pick Tristana every game, but right. apart for everyone else, every other AD carry, not so much. Uh, yeah, there's the first pick, Corky. Um, we have seen some teams in the LCS stray away from that, not feeling they have to first pick the AD carry now, but either way, this will be the strategy that Mal's are taking in this champion select. Next pick will be Alistair along with the Gragas. Just two solid picks, two beefy tanks. Yeah, two very solid picks. Overclockers knew they were getting two strong picks from this. It just depended on whether Mao's wanted to get Dan on something like a Gragas, something that he has played before. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that now goes over to Overclockers. That's a very strong set of frontline champions for Overclockers. But where does it leave Dan? Rek'Sai banned out, hasn't really shown uh, any kind of affinity for Echo. He's played Sejuani, that is one option that he could go for, uh, but jungle is not the priority so far for Mouse. Not yet. It's going to be the Hacker and probably going on to Beansu here. He's already readied the Ignite and the Teleport and looking for the Azir as well for Sayo in the mid lane. Had three games on that so far, has done very well in each and every one of those games he's actually played. Uh, maybe not in terms of scoreline, but in terms of the damage he's dealt, in terms of the plays he's made in game, has been really solid for Mouse. Yeah, I, I would uh, definitely say he has been a, a solid Hacker and player. My the question is, can he be more than just a solid Hecarim player when it comes to it? Because we have seen a little drop off for Hecarim in that top lane when it yeah. comes to uh, not playing these kind of team compositions with Azir where you're looking to set up a fight, which is what Maus are going for. So now Maus pretty much have a very clear plan on what they're going for, more of this team fight centric rather than any kind of poke composition. The difficulty here is what the overclockers go for when it comes to their composition, because look at how beefy they're going to be. Maus, as of yet, are going to only be relying on this uh, Azir in the later game to shred through some of the tanks. Yeah, we've actually seen this from a couple teams, though, where they just seem to have this, like, single threat in the mid lane. Um, but yeah, we'll see what else Maus brings to the table. What's for certain, though, Overclockers have picked up their Victor for the middle lane. Uh, been lots of talk, at least uh, between us and the office, about how Victor is super strong now with some of the changes in the mid lane with the items. Maokai as well, also seeing uh, his way back into the meta, just being a great counter, just as running over poke compositions. Um, but we're not actually seeing a poke composition here. We're seeing something different from Maus. Yeah, Maus will, for some aspects of the game, have a fairly long range when it comes to Azir plus Corky. But I'm now, especially with these uh, tanks locked in, I'm expecting the Blade of the Rune King style yeah. Corky, where your focus is less so on the, the damage coming from rockets and, and your fast pump, more now uh, adjusted slightly towards auto attacking alongside that. So. That's what I expect. We'll see whether Maus actually go for that. Uh, this set of champions would actually make sense with regards to what they've run before. Uh, there's a Sejuani we were talking about for Dan. It's a champion he's run a lot before. Dan, we've talked about again and again, likes his hard engaged champions, likes his tanks. So this fits him right down to a T. And Mountain, Janna was banned yesterday. Mountain will pick that up for himself. Mm -hmm. Actually has a 7.5 KDA. Two. 2 and 50, oh, 2 and 15 years yeah. currently on Janna in two games. Yes. Uh, Dan has played a lot of different junglers. Uh, he's played six different junglers in eight games. Uh, this is his first with Jani, so he, this is the pick he'll go back to as like his fallback. The last pick was Cogmore. So where is this going to go? I have to assume AD carry, right? Yeah. And it will be up against Corky. 
And how does that matchup go? Do they even look for a lane swap here? So at this point, I would imagine Overclock is probably want to swap in, uh, want to swap around. They've not only got Alistair into double range, but now you've got a Corky against a Cogmore. So uh, while I kind of expect Celiver to be able to play this matchup, it's certainly not exactly the easiest one. Uh, also, when you kind of look at this, that's a fairly low mobility. AD carry when it comes to it, and you've got the likes of a Hecarim, you've got the likes of a Sejuani ultimate, uh, Azir if they can get the angle on that and may be able to get him, but I'll be honest, you should never really be able to get onto a Cogmore like that as <laughs> yeah. an Azir without a big mistake, but it certainly is going to be a, a tough one for Overclockers to actually make sure that they can protect Selva, but they do have three tanks, they've got Alistair, they've got Maokai, they've got Gragas, very strong peel. All Selva's got to do is make sure his positioning is good. Yeah, make sure he doesn't get hit by the Sajani ultimate, because if that happens, then it's basically all downhill mm -hmm. from there. They still have the Victor threat, but of course you need the constant DPS coming out from the Cogmore. Over on uh, Mauser's side, spoke about the hard engage coming in from the Sajani. Uh, Beansu in the top plane, manning the Hecarim once again. Sayo on the Azir. Um, both had good games on both those champions. Sedrian. We spoke a lot about Cedrian last week uh, when he was going up against Cobby and how much he can do uh, on the team. Uh, it seemed like he did a little less, but then like right. he also had a, a weak break as well. And and Corky's actually been one of the picks that I feel like Cedrian has done worse on, just in general. I mean, we take a look at uh, the games he played as Callista, the games he played as Sivir, looked much uh, stronger, just in general. So I now wonder how Mao is going to play around this Corky, but certainly... This uh, should be an, an interesting game as we go into it. Maus are looking pretty strong this split. Overclock is, they're yet to get a win. Yeah, and as we talked about at the start of the show, they actually can't get into playoffs right. from Overclockers. They're just playing to upset the other teams now. And actually taking a, a, a win away from Maus would be very annoying because the game now is a void team Dignitas <laughs> EU in playoffs. Try and get that second or third spot. If you're in fourth, you're probably not going to have a good time. Think back in Spring Split when uh, people were playing against Origin. It was like, well, Origin are going to be number one. <laughs> Let's try and not play against them. Um, and that was the goal. But remember, tw uh, get on Twitter. Use the hashtags M-O-U-Win or O-C-Win. Tweet at Lowy Sports. We'll be checking in on your thoughts as we get into this game and whether overclockers can upset Mauers and push them further down the rankings and force them into a game against Team uh, Dignitas. Yeah, if they do go into a game against Team Dignitas, I think they'll be kicking themselves if this one slips away from them because, uh, honestly, as you said, nobody right now wants that fate. Nope. I certainly wouldn't, but we are about to get into this game. Team Mouse Sports onto the blue side, getting into this one. Now swapping up onto that bottom left corner. Overclockers in the upper right. Great dance by Mouse. That's their uh, their war dance before they get into the game. Server on the Cogmore, manning the reindeer Cogmore as well. Absolutely perfect. The best play I feel in this situation, Stress. <laughs> well, hopefully let's... Let's hope he's not a gift to uh, Maus if he <laughs> steps out of position. Otherwise, they might think that Christmas came early. But nevertheless, Maus, they uh, are going to... Uh, well, Beansu's opting for the uh, the versatile start on Hecarim. Well, you don't... This has become very commonplace now after, after the last couple of months. Where you don't really start with anything. You don't commit to any uh, full itemization. You just grab that flask, do... Uh, the first camp and then back away and see exactly where the lane swaps end up going. We are still kind of expecting a lane swap from Overclockers, but they haven't set that up for themselves quite yet. Yeah, Libic will be sitting here being the uh, cow ward. He'll see this other ward be placed down, and unfortunately he can't kill it because he didn't go sweeper. But uh, he knows it's there. Mountain knows Libic's there. I'm just going to see the uh, lines of scrimmage at the moment from both these teams. And Libic is going to try and get a deep ward. He knows it's just Mountain, <laughs> as everyone has just backed away into the middle lane. And he'll be able to get that early information from Dan. Uh, also Beansu as well, just where he's starting. But usually you'll see the Hecarim start on the Merc Wolves if they uh, want to go for a boot start. Because the Raptors actually don't give enough gold to go for boots immediately. Yep. So uh, that will be the start out for Beansu, as you said. But uh, that was quite a... <laughs> I mean, as you saw, Libic just kind of walk up, drop the ward in and... Uh, back himself away. Very brash start to that bottom lane for Libic. But, uh, you know, this game is going to start out standard 
and I, I have to feel like that is going to favor Maus until you look at uh, Overclockers with regards to Take Fun. Starting off on the Raptors, takes the extra experience from himself with the uh, the assistance from Kubon Saplings. Yeah, it's actually a really cool play that you do. You just kind of start at around 1 minute 20, yeah. start stacking those up. And uh, interestingly, Kubon's actually going for a camp himself on top of that. Usually you just do one or the other, but he's actually going to wait it out. Um, and in terms of the lane swap, we have none. So Beans is just picking up that level two. So is Kubon. They'll be going back to base and then going for the teleport. The main question now is, what does Beans go? He goes for the boots. That's going to be his uh, level one option, and has gone for the uh, the W start as well over E. So this means uh, Kubon is ever so slightly later to the lane, but it doesn't actually have an effect on uh, the experience right now. I do want to keep a track of it, see whether Beans uh, top lane can push Kubon away, but speaking of push away in the bottom lane, Cedric and the Mountain have themselves presence over the lane and have uh, already pushed back Livic this early on. I mean, this is one of the, the problems with playing um, double, uh, double, well, Alistair into double range, is if you get zoned like this, you are going to take uh, a fair amount of damage. Tabasco's gone in, did not get the steal very close on that one, though. Tried to. Uh, Smite it away, but ever so slightly. I think it was 15 health remaining on that as Dan managed to get it. Yeah, Dan didn't even smite in that scenario as well. Tabasco, not quite timing it quite correctly, but still putting on a little bit of pressure onto Dan. He's not going to be too unhappy with that scenario. Mid lane note, take fun up against Sayo. Has had a pretty good run on his Azir so far. Take fun has just been uh, adapting to the meta. We saw earlier how his stats from um, spring not quite as good now in summer. Um, maybe just taking a little longer to change his champion pool. Yeah, did. Uh, yeah, I, I, he's a player that I, I kind of feel like uh, should be in a situation where he, he, you know, changes champion pool around earlier, but seems to, for whatever reason, still be, uh, still be going with what he knows. But this game overall. This bottom lane is going pretty well here for Maus when you look at it. They get a good damage down onto Libic. They are ahead in experience, and Selva was getting zoned away from the uh, minion line as well. So this is opening up a fair amount of presence for Dan to actually go aggressive now onto the blue buff for himself. Knowing that Tabasco tried to the counter jungle for himself with only the red buff on, knew that blue buff should be available. This position from the bottom lane has allowed him to get in. Should be able to take this away with no contest. Yeah, me uh, meant that Mountain was able to go up as well and assess of that even has extra vision over that jungle places down the a very aggressive and early pink ward as well into that uh, bottom side of the jungle tabasco is going to be slightly behind in this early game slower to that level six before he can start getting those explosive cast ganks off bot lane once again you mentioned that advances in terms of being pushed up sejun is still significantly ahead especially with this wave coming in towards him interesting to see if libic will go for uh, the triumphant raw max or he'll just carry on going with headbutt or pulverize and with the wards they managed to uh, secure themselves just the knowledge that tabasco was on the lower side of the jungle so it gave Beansu a little bit of freedom now to kind of push up a little bit more in the top side make sure he's farming but tabasco's got himself around the mid lane sayo seems to be aware that it could be happening but uh, still has his flash still has barrier Nothing really to uh, lock him down here in this middle lane. So Tabasco doesn't really have anything going on here. So for the last minute and a half, all he's really got from this is the Gromp. And, uh, oh. oh, he walked over the pink ward and didn't even... Oh. oh. Got it. Hey. Okay, cool. I mean, he is uh, observant just a little bit... Uh, the fat man's a little bit slow <laughs> to uh, yeah. to pick up on things A little bit groggy sometimes. right now. <laughs> Has been using that drunk for rage maybe a little too much. Uh, Dan puts down the ward, knowing that Tabasco is most likely going to the top side of his jungle and will be taking his raptors. Dan, though, level 5 versus level 3 Tabasco. And these, these raptors are actually doing a lot of work against Tabasco as well. Dan will come in and try and get the aggression down. But the follow with the damage is actually quite significant. Take fun coming in from the middle lane, has the Chaos Storm, follows up with the Death Ray. Doesn't quite land onto Dan as he flashes away, but burns a flash just for the over-aggression from Sajrani. Yeah, and the one thing Dan really should have paid attention to in this situation was in the middle lane. Uh, Saya was actually getting shoved in by Take Fun. Uh, so as much as Dan knew that the jungle matchup should have gone in his favor, it ended up not going it because of the level 4 proc plus uh, <laughs> the damage that Tabasco got. Uh, Take Fun was shoving the wave already into Sayu, so there was no way that Sayu can go across to help out in that situation. So Dan was basically in a uh, one-way trip in the jungle. And, uh, speaking of which, Beansu takes some damage in the top lane. One-way ticket to more farm, though, because that's a big wave in front of him. 
It is a big wave in front of him, but he's still behind Kubon. And this is a Hecarim into a Maokai matchup. Maokai pretty much just neutralizes the lane by just being Maokai. It's like, okay, I'm going to Q you, and every time you use Rampage, I'm going to heal some more. But still, being behind Maokai is a little bit interesting up there. This has been zero jungler intervention. Actually, no, we did have uh, Tabasco up there very briefly, but still... Bean Su wants to be farming a little bit better, perhaps. Even so, that is a lot of uh, farm in the top lane when you look at the timing. Sayo in the mid lane is completely even with Take Fun, has gone back to base, picked up the makings of Merlin Namakon, has the Forbidden Idol, and Athena's Codex. There's a really important thing happening in the jungle, though, at this point. Dan is going to hit level 6 off this red buff. Uh, Tabasco is not even uh, at level 5 himself yet, so there is a full level of difference between the two. And consider that Sejuani, once she's six, obviously has massive amounts more impact than previously. Tabasco won't be able to disengage from uh, this setup if uh, if Dan manages to get himself into a fight in the middle lane. So Dan really should be looking to create a gank within the next minute or so, because uh, Tabasco, once he's picked up his red buff, he should be just about narrowing in on that level six mark. So it's on Dan to make this level experience actually work for him while uh, he has this kind of ultimate window uh, available. The window of opportunity. That is a lot of damage from Death Ray. Uh, has augmented that as his first ability. Has the aftershock coming through as well. Deals a little bit less damage, but still hurts, as you can see on Sayo. Going towards his blue buff, we'll be picking this one away. Eight minutes 30 into this game. Tabasco in the top lane. He is level five. He is maxing uh, Drunken Rage, which is pretty much what you do nowadays as Gragas, as we had the Q changes. And Kuban is having a fun time using Arcane Smash into Hacker. <laughs> he is. Tabasco will get level six off these Krugs, and uh, we'll have that ultimate available. But bottom lane, it's been a, a bit quiet since the beginning, since all of that massive amount of damage, but it has translated into a 10 CS lead for Corky. This was kind of what we were expecting when it came to this lane matchup, that uh, just the Cog and the Alistair are going to struggle to output as much damage when it comes to uh, the, the small trades back and forth in lane. And in fact, look at where Dan's positioned on the map. He's taking out the Scuttle Crab in the bottom side. I was thinking maybe they were going to look to dive the bottom, but don't in fact go for it. It looks like they want to contest the second blue buff, which is exactly what Dan did in yesterday's game. When uh, you look at where the first blood came, it was about this time, actually, Kubon died trying to contest the blue buff. And all of... Oh, Tabasco. All of Mauser here other than top. Well, you have made a mistake. He's going to be flashing away, looking for the body slam. He gets over the wall, but Sedrian's over the wall as well. He'll be flashing for first blood. Didn't need to flash, but it looked great. And we'll be going towards his blue buff and taking that one away as well. Literally a carbon copy of yesterday, but Tabasco dies instead of Kubon. And not only is it the blue buff, the same carbon copy because Tabasco died, so it means Dragon is on the cards. Well, this is basically the first two plays from yesterday's game between these two merged into one. Catch the jungler, get the dragon, get the objective, and uh, grab the blue buff for yourself as well. So a really good start out by Maus. Just very consistent, very patient on uh, how they're playing this game. And no need to force things, even though Dan did kind of push in and burn his flash earlier, but that yeah. was a minor error. <laughs> patient bear will wait for you. <laughs> um, take fun, though. Was thinking about going back or be uh, stopping that one off. There's a big CS lead in the mid lane from Take Fun, just because Sayo has been reacting to the team plays more than anything. Libic is going into the jungle now, knowing that everyone's gone back from Maus, using this opportunity to maybe gank mid lane, maybe place down some wards. Not going to gank mid lane because Dan saw him, so the cat will be unhappy and we'll have to go back into the bottom lane and carry on farming with Selva. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's not the most yeah. subtle of... Uh, no, he's not. Uh, as he, as he tramples through the jungle, <laughs> making a lot of noise, the cowbell ringing as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, talking about Salva, uh, we were talking about him um, earlier before the game, and also in Spring, where he played a lot of, like, Tristana. He was uh, very much uh, a player who would do well when the team was ahead. He would just right. accumulate kills. We called him the silent AD carry because he just uh, got ahead. Dan, there's a ward there. He's going he for knew it. it. He, he knew it. Oh. Yeah, he did. Know. He's got it. So Salava, he was the silent AD carry. Um, but nowadays, when we see the team being behind, he just doesn't do a whole lot. And we saw that uh, right. reflected as well in his KDA and how much he's been doing for the team. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Although this time you might be able to pick something up because Cedrin, no flash, remember? Oh, the Pulverize as well. That's a lot of damage onto Cedrin. He'll be Valking away. There comes a Monsoon for good measure. Maybe not entirely necessary, but Cedrin did burn his flash earlier. He's better safe than sorry. Yeah, that's... Uh 
looked like it could have gone better over Clocker's way, but the fact that Mountain was around just sticking side by side with Cedrian, never too far away. So uh, no dice today for Overclockers for getting anything in that bottom lane. But one thing I kind of want to talk about now that we're on 5.13 was uh, the changes to Righteous Glory. It was actually the reversion, uh, the reverting of the buff. It got a good few patches away. And uh, we can see a catalyst on Maokai, but I also can see Dan and Tabasco <laughs> kind of eyeing he's each good, other in good. the jungle. Yeah, he's good. So top lane... Righteous Glory has been nerfed when it comes to what it actually gives you on the stats, gives you a little bit less on the health, and the active is now uh, a higher cooldown. So Kubon is just going to sit on this Catalyst, the Protector, for a while, has a Warden's Mail on top of it. So something we're kind of expecting to see a lot more is less of the first item, Righteous Glory, more of the kind of get the Catalyst, sit on it, and convert it to Righteous Glory later. I'll get that later on in the game. and. 58% over to Mouse Sports, 42% for Overclockers. Actually, surprisingly uh, high for Overclockers considering their current record and the game yesterday. But uh, yeah, Overclockers have definitely looked better, but they've still been at a level below everyone else. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's fair to say. Which is unfortunate because, as we said, how good they were in spring. Yeah. Remember, uh, this lineup was Reason Gaming that played in the promotion tournament. Didn't go so well for them on no. the promotion tournament, but uh, it certainly was... Uh, I mean, that was the game that's, that they played against Giants. They actually did pick up one game, so yep. it wasn't horrendous for them. It just seems between spring and summer, something just hasn't really settled itself. And right now, Overclockers find themselves without a win. They've also been like a staple of the Challenger series as well. Like, I can't actually think of a time where Overclockers or Reason Gaming or Love on the Shore or whatever they've been called has not been a part of the Challenger games right. and what you've been seeing. Um, I think part of the problem here, though, is they've really struggled with not only changing what I assume is their part of their shot calling with their jungler being changed around, but also Take Fun is just not in his element in the current meta. You talked about it earlier. He's not able to play Assassins, so he has to play other champions. You can see him on the Victor here, which uh, yeah. is not really an Assassin in any uh, stretch of the imagination. No. I mean, sure, he can 100 to 0 somebody by putting that Chaos Storm on top of someone's head and death raying them down, but certainly it is uh, not the same as the, the, LeBlanc. the LeBlanc that we saw. Yeah out of Take Fun previously. So it just seemingly just hasn't adapted yet. And it's a big problem for Overclock is if they even want to hope to look to compete anywhere, really. Yeah, um, it's like Forgiven was saying, you know, a good player is a player who adapts. And Overclock is the only ever a team who does well when the ebb and flow of the meta uh, goes their way, then they have a ways to go in, in yeah. being a good team. But when the meta is on their side, they do do well. So they have half of it down, at least. I mean, one of my biggest issues, I think, with Overclockers, this split, has been that they've just not been proactive in any s sense of the imagination. The, mm. I will I will forgo one game on that. The game against Team Dignitas that we broadcasted, where they had a big lead to begin, about 5,000 gold lead, one of the, the real times that Team Dignitas have been behind. But then they just slowed down and stopped really doing anything on the map. And I feel like that's what they've done in so many games. This early game, they've just not been doing anything. They've been playing not to lose rather than actively playing on the map to win. You can yeah. see Mouse just gets another blue buff. This is the second of the game, and Dragon is spawning in 35 seconds as well. And, Mau and Overclockers right now don't seem to be able to do anything to actually deter Mouse from taking that objective. The other thing is, like, uh, Overclockers will be playing Ex Nihilo next week yeah. as well. Um, and that's a matchup where that will very much highlight that issue because Ex Nihilo will just run at you, and Overclockers, <laughs> it depends on how they uh, react to that situation. Yeah. Because if they are able to do something, then at least they still have the strength, and it's important moving forwards uh, into the next bit if they qualify again. But back onto this game Cedrian and the Mountain in this bottom lane with Dan waiting in the wings for this gank. He's level 10 now. Still waiting to use his ultimate to get a stun down. Initiated by Livic, and Dan will take this opportunity to go in. Comes in with the Arctic Assault, gets the ultimate down for the lock onto Livic. He'll be used, uh, using his ultimate here, and he'll be backing away and walking into the bush. So, a little bit too tanky. Very difficult to burst down an Alistair with Unbreakable, will it? Yeah, Mountain and the rest of Maus at this point. Oh, Mountain's going to check into Tabasco. Doesn't really want the fight, though, so uh, Tabasco backs away. Uh, Maus, we're kind of playing that as if to say that Dan's not here, and we're hoping that Selva kind of moved forward so he'd get hit by that ultimate too. 
didn't end up panning out that way. Uh, and now with the Sichuan, the ultimate not available, Overclockers are actually going to look to position for the Dragon at this point. See whether Dan can do anything about it. Does have Smite up, does have the level advantage as well. Only by one It's the difference of level 9 and level 10. Can Dan steal? No, no, he, he cannot. Uh, and Tabasco will be out of there. Getting the permafrost down, though. But can Mal's get anything on the retreat? B2 in from the top lane. Uses the ultimate. Gets the kill onto Salava as an exit kill. Uh, oh! <laughs> wow. Mountain. He's out of there. Just, just, just gets away. A real key thing in this fight. Binsu in the fight. Kubon not in the fight. Was sat mm. in base with teleport available. Uh, I really want to see whether there was an opportunity for Kubon maybe to get himself into this fight because there were wards around for overclockers. Maybe they're not in the most opportune of positions, but certainly Kubon could have looked to get in the fight. I, I, I guess we'll catch that. If uh, if a replay comes up of that, but certainly Beansu managed to get himself onto Selva. As we said in Champion Select, that's what Beansu's job is right now. Get onto the back line, take out that Cogmore, make sure that uh, Overclockers can't put out any damage. Yeah, gone for the Ignite as well, just to help with that cause. He's in top lane here against Kubon. This will be an interesting trade as Kubon will Q Beansu, and Beansu will Q Kubon, and they'll lose <laughs> some health, and then Kubon will get all his health back with Sap Magic. Yeah, Binsu uh, is able to get some of his health back, but this chase is continuing because Tabasco got up himself up into that top lane. Uh, Mid tower did fall meanwhile, though, as uh, Victor had just constantly pushed Sayo in. So it was kind of to be expected, but now Sayo can at some point just put a sun disc up and go, haha, my tower is back. Yeah. Uh, it will decay, but for yeah. now, at least I have a I tower. Mean, it'd be a bit OP if it did. <laughs> just <laughs> a, I just have my tower back. Here comes the ult oh. from Tabasco. And right into Kuban as well with the lockdown. Immediately lands the shift and the lock onto Bean Super. He's actually running away here. We'll be flashing away and dead. Yeah, Not flashing I, I away, mean. Flashing the, after. Oh, mid lane. And he's getting punted over the wall. Actually, maybe out of the range. Of, <laughs> no, never mind. Dan's got his ultimate. He's just going to kill kill him with the ult. <laughs> Not many times you see the ult just being used to kill <laughs> on that one. Didn't need it for the entire play. But overall, so that's a kill trade in the top lane. Kill trade in the middle lane with turrets likely to go down. Yeah, that one will go as well. So overall, it's a fairly even trade. Keep in mind, Overclock is to get a mid tower as well. Now it's bottom lane. There's an engage. Yeah, Lipic engages with lo very low HP. He'll be using the Unbreakable Will, but it's still being chased down by Mountain, who is now turning away because the teleport coming in from top lane did manage to get the Twisted Advance onto Mountain, but he is able to blast them away with the Monsoon, and with that extra movement speed, is able to kite away from Kubon. Uh, Cedrian is a little aggressive, but he's able to make it work against the retreating Maokai, who will be going out of here. So, overall, three and one in terms of kills, one to one in the dragons, but the slight advantage in terms of towers to overclockers. But despite that, the gold advantage is over to Maus. Let's take a look at the mid lane again. Yeah, this is the mid lane. No need for the uh, Sejuani ultimate yet, but Take One actually bounced Alley -oop. up and over the boar on that one. It uh, looked like he connected with Dan and kind of hopped off. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Interesting one on the middle lane, but uh, Dan was trying not to use his ultimate. Kill for all, worth. 100% worth. Uh, Salva taking rockets to the face, definitely not worth in the bottom lane. Sayo, though, has just passed over a ward and is trying to get the gank onto the bottom lane. There is a pink ward there, but Cedrion might just kill the bot lane by himself and just walk away. Uh, Salva just stayed around too long. This is a really weird play by Salva when you look at it. You say, as you said, the TLDR of it is he stayed around too long. He had the information that his tower was dying, plus there was an incoming Azir, plus they were just there in the middle lane anyway. Why would you stay that close on a Cogmore with no flash, no heal? Like, that decision does not make sense in any realm of possibility. Yeah, lag. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know. It was a very odd play from Salva. Um, overall, yeah, we just haven't seen overclockers on an individual level as well between the players, just not on their game compared to what we've seen in previous seasons from them. I do, however, like the play that Kuba made down in the bottom lane, uh, trying to get onto the Corky and the Janna mm. with a teleport. I think it was uh, a good attempt, knowing that they had teleport advantage, knowing Beansu couldn't get himself down there. So uh, overclockers are starting to try and do things, but they, they're just coming up short every time. Yeah. Um, also, the dragon play was actually good. Uh, they got the dragon right, for a right. kill. So, and that was also a proactive play from... Uh, actually, well, it was more of a reactive play since Mouse <laughs> went back and yeah, they capitalized on it. But 
Still, overclockers do make good decisions, um, just sometimes poorly executed. They, and it's they, the other decisions that counter to counteract that. Right, right. And I, I feel like there are there are certain times where they just don't make decisions, which mm. in itself, I guess, is a decision in itself because you've got two options: you can do something or you can do nothing. <laughs> yeah. And if you do nothing, I guess that's your decision made. But uh, certainly, overclockers, I feel like, uh, just generally throughout, just th when we've seen them in Challenger as reason, they always had decent macro level decision making but for some reason part of that has kind of fallen off and sometimes there's this reluctance for them to actually utilize it and it, one of the things that has really highlighted this split is kind of the tiers of decision making within challenger team dignitas right at the top because we actually feel like they have good decision making just in an overall sense then there's kind of like our second place teams in in the standings where you've got mm. maus gamers too uh, and, and then at the bottom, it's denial. just tears streaming down their face. Uh, yeah, <laughs> where there's just almost no real uh, coherent decision making, at least. So it's it's a weird one. We'll see if Overclockers can fix these issues, though. Miles, though, looking uh, better from week to week, at least. Um, just making a good decision, pushing down the mid lane, bringing up the Sun Disc, even shielding Sedrin just so you can get that last auto attack off on the turret to do a little bit more damage. Beans who split pushing in the bottom lane against the Maokai has actually now uh, increased his CS and is actually now overtaking Kubon. Uh, Sion out, he's backing away here and backing into his team, he's going on to the Dragon. Uh, Overclockers was a decision. They actually close in around this Dragon to try and contest, but just are uh, too late to the punch. They would have heard that and do not actually decide to uh, push a lane because now they're going into the mid lane, but they could have done that from the get-go and maybe at least gotten some damage onto the turret. Now Miles are actually backing off and they had the position, but after all of that, they essentially trade the dragon for a wave in mid lane. Yeah, I think it would have been tough for them to get any damage on the middle turret. It, it kind of was sat flat in the lane, mm. a little bit pushed in towards them, but uh, t to be honest, there's not a lot that Overclockers could have done when that dragon went down because, I mean, you look at how their waves are set up, Mi uh, top lane ever so slightly pushed in towards them, bottom lane ever so slightly pushed in towards them as well. I mean, unless you send somebody out to uh, to one of those lanes to try and push it, which is a dangerous play on itself, um, there's nothing really to gain in that situation if you're in the Overclockers camp, which bodes well for Maus. They have a good lead for themselves. That's basically an uncontestable objective in their pocket as well. Now Maus have to answer the question of uh, what's their next play? because it's now down to inner towers for them, which is going to be fairly difficult to clear out by the fact that there is going to be a victor sat in one lane. Cogmore in the other is uh, not the best wave clear, but Sayu. Oh, body slam flash into the knockback, into the chaos storm, into the kill onto Sayo. Just catching him out. Sayo was just thinking he had the kill onto take fun and uh, was not able to get the rest of his damage up before Tabasco helped him. So, yeah, nice pick there. Maus actually do not feel uh, phased by that at all, since they just walk into the middle lane as a group and uh, carry on doing what they would have done anyway. Yeah, I, I honestly looking at that player, I thought Sayo was going to back away. He had his ult, had his flash. Well, he tried. Uh, yeah, I mean he did try. I, I was just kind of <laughs> expecting him. He got good damage down onto Takefun, but Takefun kind of traded it back. Uh, interesting play out by Overclock is here, and the fact that this is them contesting a blue buff, but do they have the presence to do it? Dan is on his way. Cedric and Mountain are here. They will get it. Now the question is, do they get out? Because Binsu is incoming up the river. Now it's two versus four when Dan can get that three if you count in Selva. Oh, he gets the flash from Selva. Now goes on to Levick. He's already low enough, but an ult will not really save him. Sedrin comes in with the last rocket. He's going to survive for a little while longer, but he's just going to allow the rest of the team to escape. Well, maybe not, because Dan's here with the ultimate to lock down Tabasco. They get that kill as well. Kubon now comes into the fight, but maybe 20 seconds too late. Takefun's here to try and even up the odds. Does he have Chaos Storm? In a few seconds, he does, but it's too late. That was a 2-0 and zero going over to Mouse Sports. These are some really weird teleports coming out by Kubon when you look at uh, how he engages where he should be teleporting in. Kubon wanted the Home Guards uh, proc on his boots, so he finished his recall and teleported into the fight when his team were already basically dead. <laughs> At Hold this on, point, guys. Tabasco like not here. Speed. This should be a very easy Baron for Dan to smite away. Maus are in full control of this game. Yeah, um, it's yeah. Now they yeah. have full control of this game. They've had control over this game for a while. Um, 
And Dan is going to take this crab as well. He really wants that crab. 56 gold in the bank. Boom. Uh, three towers to two in this game. Baron gone over to Mouse. Two and one in Dragons. Now have the uh, gold advantage as well. 7,000 gold. You can see a bunch of items being picked up. Bean soup, standard, gone for the Triforce. Into the Spirit Verge because it's a lot of magic damage from Overclockers. Um, pretty much standard all over the board coming in from Mouse. You can see the Death Cap and Marilla Nomicon from Sayo. Uh, not seeing a huge deviation in terms of uh, in terms of builds. Although, we may be about to see one on Sayo. That Why is that? Is the rest? makings of a haunting, guys? It's the makings. Could still go other places. I'm not going to jump Righteous the gun glory. too far. <laughs> I'm not going to jump the gun too quickly, but uh, oh. certainly it's an item that has been making things very uh, quiet. Overclock is setting up a play. Tricky in the middle lane. Oh, Libic, he's caught Sayo. He has, but maybe Sayo's caught the rest of the team as there is now a Sundus there, and there's the ultimate in from the Swajani as well. Locks down Kubon and Libic. Libic will be paying the price, and Selava tries to get the damage onto the Sundus before it can do more damage to his teammates. A one-for-one one in the uh, in the mid lane, and the push now continues from Mouse, who have the Baron buff minions. They'll be pushing even further. Take from still has his ultimate, though, so... Miles may have to be a little careful on uh, on the aggression. Bean two in the bottom lane, no, no one to contest him. He'll just take this bottom turret. No teleport on Kubon as well, so no real way of getting the Maokai out onto the map and uh, getting himself into the fight. So Mao's are going to group in the top side as well. Now Kubon's shown bottom lane, so they know they have the numbers advantage here. It's still a matter of time before Libic and Take Fun get there, but this minion wave did die fairly quickly. Look at how Selva's taking damage, though. Look how Sedrian's also taking damage from Selva, but they are able to clear out this minion wave, and that was enough aggression from Overclockers to deter the, sp uh, to deter the push from Mao's. Libic trying to chase after here. We'll be clearing away this ward. Sedrian will be throwing a rocket. And bottom lane, Kuban chasing after Bean Su. Won't be able to kill him, but we'll be able to clear out this minion wave just to stop the push more than anything. Tabasco also there to uh, back him up just in case. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually interested, speaking again about the AP itemization, because it's one of the big things that changed on 5.13. So Haunting Guys uh, picked up. I imagine, obviously, that Leandri's Torment is going to be picked up at some point. The question is now, how quickly does Sayo pick up Leandri's Torment? Because he's now against three tanks. So it's going to help him burn through tanks. And to be honest, a lot of the itemization with regards to magic damage, uh, items like Sonya's Hourglass, like Luton's Echo, kind of the, the actual damage output was normalized to uh, not being the 120 AP items. Drop down in AP, but it's now all about the utility. So I wonder how quickly, as I said, Sayo is going to finish off the, the Leandries to chunk through some of the health here because he's not opted for something like Azania's Hourglass. He's opting for more damage just overall against these tanks. Yeah, very much about building an item because of what the item does, right. rather than building it because it's got a bunch of AP and I want to kill people. Yeah, um, well, saying that, he's got a Rabbit and Seth Cap, which did get an true. increase on AP <laughs> uh, when it comes to the amount that uh, it's giving you of bonus. Now 35% instead of 30. So yeah. a nice little added Sick value. touch. Although, to be honest, when, when talking with some of the other uh, casters here, we were kind of expecting maybe a touch later into the game, maybe a third item on uh, some champions, but certainly working well for Sayu when it comes to his damage output. That's true. On Ezreal, though, he will build it after his Runeglaive. And we have been seeing that from uh, specifically Senkuk so far. Sedrian, though, in the top lane. The classic split push Corky going in here, trying to uh, get some damage onto Salva, and more importantly, his turret mid lane. Uh, I want to say they've caught Bean soon, but he's also Hecarim, so he'll be getting away Ooh, the 1v1 damage. trade in the top lane. Salva will be pushed behind his turret. Take Fun is there to back him up. Tabasco coming in to lend a hand. And Lyric. He wants to help, he wants to flank, he wants to do something, but he's not going to get the gank. He isn't. Uh, looking at things, Mouse, they knew they had the numbers advantage for a while, couldn't quite push onto the turret because that Victor just is able to clear out the minion waves, and Mouse didn't exactly have a, a big minion wave to, to begin with on this trade. So they're going to try it again with the next wave coming in, but it means Selva has got all of his health back as well, but Selva doesn't exactly have the most amount of, of, of damage when it comes to his itemization. Still has a fair amount that he's outputting against the squishier targets, but against the likes of Dan, I, I, want, I struggle to see how much damage he's actually going to do here because Dan has three items completed. Though he, is, uh, he has got a fair amount of magic resist, not the most amount of armor overall. Yeah, he said they can get in range. Ooh, he'll do a lot, but that depends if Beansu's already on top of his face, mauling him alive as Hecarim. 
again, Libig. Looking for the flank. I am tracking the cow. Track the horse too. The ponies on the side. In comes the oh, tree as the well. Tree. Teleport. Everyone's coming in for this party. Kubon looking for the fight, but Dan's gonna lock them down first. Tabasco over the wall. All the disruption. Cedrion will have to exit the fight post haste, but Take Fun will be backing off to his turret while Beansu is trying to get the kill down. Sayu is still alive. There's the Emperor's Divide, but it only lands onto Kubon. Actually, we do see Salivar and Take Fun taken down in the aftermath of that damage. Kubon now back into the fight, but a little too late to save Tabasco. And that's the triple kill. Uh, Triple kill coming in for Sayo. With no carries left available, Overclockers have absolutely no damage to close this uh, fight that they seem to start fairly well off. But as you said, Take Fun and Selva managed to, well, ended up falling in that one. Beansu couldn't quite find Selva at the start of the fight, but Maus managed to find them to end it. And that is going to be an, in an inhibited down as well now in favor of Overclockers. Not a lot they can do here other than just chase them out of the base. Yeah, I'm just going to have to clear away these minion waves and uh, be reactive. Um, being forced into this position. Mount going to go back to base here. We're going to see a replay of that last fight, though, now that all set up. Yeah, so keep your eyes on Selva. Keep your eyes on Take Fun. Beansu's looking for the ult, but he can't quite get the angle because it means going into the turret until he finds Take Fun instead. Okay, that is uh, as juicy a price. Selva also got kind of bumped forward in that fight. And from here, Sayo is fairly open to just kind of just output damage for the rest of this fight. No real carries means that he might get locked down here or there, but nobody can actually take him off this uh, this fight. It's an easy cleanup for Maus. It was indeed. 10 to 4 in terms of kills. Significant gold lead, 12,000 over to Maus. The seven towers as well. The dragons are going over to Maus. Like, literally in every single category, Maus are ahead of Overclockers right now. Baron has just spawned. No doubt Maus will be going for that. And Overclockers are going to have to do something, but with that top inhibitor down, it's making it harder and harder for them to make a play. It, it really is. Although one thing that, you know, it is a, a beacon of hope for Overclockers in this game. Uh, Take Fun is actually doing just about as well as... Ooh, Libic did uh, take a lot of damage in the jungle. Take Fun is doing just about as well as Sayo is when it comes to his overall gold income. Uh, they're both set at about 12 thousand gold uh, a lot of the reason is because overclockers uh take fun has this massive amount of cs lead he's clearing a lot of waves just kind of as mouse pushed them in but the evening up of that size has got a lot of global gold and it's come from the objectives it's come from the towers and now uh and to not only that gold total but now the buff total for sayu we'll be able to add the baron buff to uh make sure they can push in the waves yeah add that one to his collection and three two and four sayu currently just another good run as Azir. Yeah. Uh, has gone for that Leandris now. That is completed on those triple items. Tabasco and Salava desperately trying to clear out these minions. There is a Kubon there, but maybe Ooh. Kubon's caught. He will Righteous be using Glory Righteous fight. Glory. will be jumping onto the uh, onto Beansu, rather, but he's been knocked back with the Emperor's Divide. Sayo actually puts himself on the other side of the Emperor's Divide and gets taken down by Overclockers. Beansu looking for the re-engage here. Can he get it? No. Can't find Selva, but Selva found Sayo in that and fight. Take now Fun's found Bitsu. Bitsu. He's get, getting the power transfer, gets the movement speed as well. Not quite in range. Good Lots Halligan. of movement speed from the E and the Howling Gale from Mountain. We'll be keeping Overclockers back, but that was an unsuccessful push from Mouse. Keep your eyes on Cedrian, though, because in this middle lane, uh, the fact that the, the minions in the top lane have already taken the Nexus turret actually allows Mouse to regroup because Libic and Take Fun are slightly split off from the rest of their team. Here comes the teleport in from Beansu. Should have that home guard available. Can he get into this fight? Dan is low, but so is Libic. He'll be falling here. Tabasco trying to be the front line for his team for Take Fun and Selva. They're trying to get a range to put their damage out, but can't quite do so. Middle inhibits a turret fell. And while that entire fight was happening before the Nexus turret fell as well for Overclockers. So even while they're able to get semi-good fights, Mal's just win anyway because of the uh, advantage they've built up by taking those base structures. And not only that, now they get their fourth dragon of the game as well. Mal's are in an absolutely dominating position in this game. Four dragons, nine turrets, 12 kills over five. And it's just these same kind of team fights happening again and again. This one was a little different because of Selva being able to get his damage out onto Sayo. But as you said, kind of catches himself out with the Emperor's Divide. Completely cuts himself off from the rest of the team. But then Beansu gets chunked pretty hard and has to back. But it, it's enough time that they've bought that the turrets ended up falling in favor of Maus anyway. Yeah. Overclockers. The, the time is... Uh it's ticking. 
Uh, I feel like they're going to be falling fairly soon. There comes the Sun Disc. We'll be applying the extra pressure on the mid lane. Tabasco looking for another flank. That's what Overclockers have been doing well, looking for the flanks in this game. Whether they've actually worked out is another matter entirely, but Tabasco will get the flank regardless to see how much it does for this fight. Not a lot because it was disengaged by Maus using that Janna. Beans who try to get in range of take fun will be using the Onslaught of Shadows and stomps him down. Taking out the major damage threat from Overclockers. Now it's only Celeber to deal the damage and that's going to lock him up. And all the damage in from Sayo will be taking him out. Now it's just the triple tanks against Maus's lineup and there's not a lot they can do about it. The tree will be retreating. The cow is in full retreat as well. And now there's only Gragas to stand between Maus and picking up this victory. And there's not a whole lot he can do about it. There's a second Nexus falling. Oh, the second Nexus turret falling, and this will be the Nexus itself going down. Mal securing this week two and zero. Overclock is still a yet, still yet to nest a single win. It is not a good start or even finish to this split for Overclockers, but it has been a good split overall for Maus. When you look at things, their results have been night and day compared to how they did in spring. Honestly, you know, they changed their lineup a little bit. They they fixed a couple of their issues by the looks of things. And they're looking pretty strong overall. Yeah. I, I honestly think that this playoffs race is not the same kind of playoffs race we had last time. I still think this is kind of like a, a three or four horse race, maybe. But you've then got to compare them to their other competitors trying to secure the places below Team Zing Tassi Yu, because you look right. at Denial and Gamers 2. Doom Bows look as good as those two teams. Have we seen hmm. that yet? I would argue yes, actually. I especially the second through fourth spots. I, I actually feel like Maus can contend with those teams uh, on the best of days. And I even think that Team Dignitas on there, if they're looking shaky, I don't think is out of the question for Maus. I think it's a, a tough game, but I certainly don't think that there's this massive, massive disparity between all of the teams. Well, it's an interesting question, and we would actually like to ask Sayo that. So we do have Sayo on the line to talk about that victory there. Hey, Sayo, how's it going? Hello. Uh, it's fine. Obviously happy about the win. Yeah, it looked very convincing in that one, Sayo. Uh, again, you played the Azir and did super well on that 4-3 and 8. Uh, we were just chatting about how you guys compare up to basically everyone else in the playoffs race now. Where do you think you stand up against Denial and, uh, and Gamers 2? I actually think the, the difference between us and Denial and Dignitas is not that big, even though there's still a difference. I think there's still the chance that we can take a game from them. And um, yeah, but if um, you look at at the standings, I think you can put us at the third place around where we are anyways right now. So yeah, that's basically what I think. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's a very fair fair statement to make. I want to talk specifically a little bit about mid lane with you. Uh, we were playing on yeah. patch 5.13. How has the 5.13 changes affected the mid lane champions in your eyes? I think it's actually... Um, very good because um, the thing with mid lane now is that uh, you can actually go to base quicker and get that large rod and even have more options with um, the items you can build out of it and that actually helps you a lot in the mid lane since before it was like okay if he gets a needlessly large rod on a base and if you don't he's a lot stronger than you are and that's not how it is anymore and I think that's very good for the mid lane and also the item choices became a lot better obviously Le the Leandris got buffed a lot and the same with Rylai's especially for Asia it's awesome since every order take applies 40% slow and the combination is just great well, staying with the topic of the meta discussion, uh, you spoke a lot about items, but do you think we're going to see any changes in terms of the picks we're seeing? Because so far, we haven't seen any of the challenger teams make a change. Yeah, I think um, a lot of a lot of picks are um, can become very viable now, since um, especially with the Leandris item and the Rylas item, a lot of new champions benefit from it, and. Um, I can give you an example of maybe Zyra, who's very good with those new items, or uh, maybe even champions like Brand or Malzaha, you can see them, since they have ridiculous damage with the new item, but they still have the problem of being immobile, so I still think that uh, champions like Azir or Ezreal in the mid lane are top tier in this patch, but this might change in the next patch, since Azir is also getting um, nerfed in the PBE, and then we might see some uh, newer picks which uh, benefit from the new items the Rylai's and the Leandris, and yeah. So uh, mid lane's going to be exciting soon. I certainly am looking forward to those changes kind of filtering through. Last question for you, Sayo. 
Uh, next week, you guys face Denial in what is going to be a real close and interesting game, I feel. Yes. Do you feel like putting a prediction forward to what the sto score line will be next week? Um, honestly, it could go either way. Like it could go 2-0 for them, 2-0 for us, or 1-1. But um, I think they have a small edge over us, and um, but I'm still going to say it's going to be 1-1. Well, fantastic. Still staying humble there, Sayo. Great performance in this game. Congratulations once again on the win. I'll be talking to you more next week. Thanks. There you go. I, I am so looking forward to these mid lane changes to filter. Too. I know, he's I, talking about Mao Zaha. I'd love to see that <laughs> in the mid lane. Also, Brand, there's yeah. discussions of whew, Seen some of that champions that you'd not never fun. see. Yeah, I uh, agree. We yeah. uh, we played a, an in-house game the other day, and I got rolled by Brand. So that <laughs> that's was true. True story. But uh, yeah, we also wanted to take a look at Sedrin in that game. He went seven zero and eight. He did forty one point five thousand damage in that game. That was sixteen point seven k more than Celiver on a Cogmore, who didn't never really got to late game, but still very impressive when it came to him this game. To put that in perspective, the guy we just talked to, Sayo on Azir. He did 26.5k, so that's uh, quite a lot more damage yeah. <laughs> than a mid laner with all of these OP items that Sayo was just talking yeah. about. So uh, items not so OP, all you've got to do is play Corky. Yeah, you just, you've just got to be Cedrin. Uh, that's all you need to do. Then again, he did kind of just hit tanks all day. That's so. true, yeah. There's a lot of health to chunk through. Yeah. Either way, Cedrin, great play. <laughs> uh, that's game one in the books, so we've got to stuck up before we take our abyssal voyage to the break. We'll see you on the other side.